Good to be with you uh, together on this uh, Father's Day. It's also uh, our new holiday, June, Juneteenth Day, uh, that is important, and some very beautiful scripture readings about uh, the storm at sea, and it's, it's hard to know, you know, what's a preacher to do, what, what to focus on. Uh, but given our anti-racism work as a parish, I felt called to focus more on this, uh, this, that theme of anti-racism. Uh, that I think is, is part, very much part of this Juneteenth day. Uh, I, often, I often wonder what we can do as a parish or what I can do as a pastor, as an individual, to, uh, to be anti-racist. Sometimes it can be a, a little difficult. Uh, but it struck me that this new national holiday that we're celebrating this weekend is a great opportunity to address uh, that topic. So I didn't want to pass it up. And, and I consulted with some prisoners and staff and thought that was, that was probably a good way to go, even though it's tough to pass up some of those other opportunities to preach as well. I could, I could just give three homilies, that's probably what Father RJ would do, but I'm not gonna do that to you. They told us in seminary, one homily, okay. So this, as we know, this Juneteenth Day celebration uh, celebrates the date in 1865 when the freeing of the slaves, when the news of that made it to the South and particularly Texas. So that's in effect when uh, freedom from slavery became effective in the South. Um, I think the fact that this was declared a national holiday in a bipartisan way, I think that's very significant uh, because it recognizes our racist history. It doesn't kind of brush over it or bury it. It puts it right out there and, and acknowledges that. And uh, I've, I've been reading some books about anti-racism, and I, I know you won't be able to see that from, from your pews, but a most recent book I read is called The Color of Compromise by Jamar Tisby. And he's an African-American historian, a minister, a Notre Dame grad, I might say. Uh, and uh, he, with his book, I think is very, very enlightening. Uh, Jamar recounts how racism is embedded in our U.S. history, starting in the colonial period, the revolutionary period, the Civil War, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, down to civil rights and Black Lives Matter. And reading this book really opened my eyes to how deeply racism is embedded in our American history. It is not just some little thread. It is really deeply embedded. And I think anybody who would read this history and knows this history cannot deny it. Uh, racism in our country is not just a matter of personal prejudice. We all have our personal prejudices, but it's truly systemic. Racist choices were made along the way, starting with leg legitimizing and institutionalizing slavery, mostly for economic reasons and many other choices along the way. And Jamar points out how these choices could have gone differently, but they went uh, in, the, in the direction of racism so often, and often for economic reasons. And he points out how the Christian churches, including Catholicism, were complicit along the way in those, in those decisions, uh, often offering rationalizations for racist laws and practices. So why is this important? Well, we can't fix a problem until we acknowledge it. And this is not saying that we're all individually racist. I don't think that's the case. It's saying that we have inherited and contributed to structures and systems that are racist. And the challenge for us is how can we undo these? As Catholic Christians, we're called to undo these. And obviously that's not going to be easy. For example, George Floyd's murder last year in Philando Castile's killing up the street five years ago uh, are signs of systemic racism in our policing. There's obviously a lot of good police officers. A number of my former students uh, became police officers to be of service to the community. However, there are patterns of racial injustice that seem to be endemic to policing. And we need to fix that. Doesn't mean defunding the police. Uh, I think we need good police officers to keep us safe, especially in Minneapolis where I live. It's kind of a mess over there. But here at St. Paul, you, you guys have it much, much better. Um, and why am I talking about this from the pulpit? 
maybe I should be calling the mayor or my congressperson or whatever. I'm, I'm not, I don't see myself as making a political statement, but really a moral and a faith statement today. Today's second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians tells us whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Well, racism is part of the old things that need to pass away. And if we're to be a new creation, we need to be anti-racist. Our Christian faith tells us that we are all God's children, made in the image of our Creator. Jesus makes it perfectly clear that how we treat the least of our sisters and brothers is how we treat Him. So as we seek to build the kingdom of God here and now, working to be anti-racist, I think, is an integral part of that, to which I think we're being called in a special way at this time in our history, with all that's been going on, Philando Castillo, George Floyd, all that's been going on, I think, I think God is really calling us. Uh, my friends, I really believe that God is calling us to work on this issue, especially uh, as a Christian community, as a parish. And that's where I think this is very much a matter of our faith. We are called to build the kingdom of God, and how can we, how can the kingdom of God exist with, with racism? Uh, racism is antithetical to the kingdom of God, so we need to combat it. Uh, and, uh, and I want to thank the members of our anti-racism task force, uh, also our school, uh, uh, Anton is here, who leads the anti-racism anti task force in our school, and also in our parish. Uh, I want to thank all of you on those different committees for helping us, helping us work on, on, on that question of how can we as a, as a parish community, as a school community, be anti-racist. I want to thank you so much. But I think this is an important call that God is giving to us at this time, and that's why I decided that I wanted to, uh, to use that as the topic for my homily this morning, even though there's many other things that could well be addressed. Father, Son, Holy Spirit.